All right, every move is now in Smash, so nothing better to do than start talking about the 10 moves that I want kicked right back out of Smash. Keep in mind, this isn't really a video about moves that just need to be tweaked. Like, I think a lot of people feel right now like Mr. Geeman watches Fire is a little too over-centralizing in his kit. I'm not necessarily going to say I disagree, but if you just rebalanced him a little bit, it'd be totally fine. I'm talking about moves that whenever Smash 6 comes around are just completely booted out the door and replaced with something more interesting, more functional, more canonically faithful, etc. Criteria is pretty obvious outside of that, although as you'd expect, there's going to be a pre pretty heavy bias towards the earlier characters on this list for pretty obvious reasons. Let's do it! Alright, starting off at number 10. Luigi Cyclone. This move commits two pretty fundamental sins. One, it's a pretty weak reference. It might be kind of a reference to Super Mario World Spin Jump or like Super Mario Galaxy, but both those abilities are much more associated with Mario and even then it's kind of a tenuous connection. And two, it's annoying as all hell and no one likes playing against it. Either of those in isolation are possibly passable, but stack them on top of each other and no, this thing's gotta go. I think it's pretty fair to say that for a lot of people, Luigi is most associated with the Luigi's Mansion franchise at this point, and it's cool that it got some representation in Ultimate, but this could be pushed a lot further, so something like that replacing the Dambi slot could be really interesting. Maybe have his special moves in general revolve more around the Poltergust. The Mario and Luigi franchise, another really obvious one to pull inspiration from. You could do something with balloons, sports. The Mario sports franchise is always one that people are asking for inspiration to be pulled from. Personally, I'd like that to be reserved more for the likes of Daisy, who's been more decloned, or Waluigi. Those, I think, would be better reps for those games, but Luigi isn't a bad candidate. Yeah, not super opinionated on the direction you take this one, but basically give me something less annoying and I'm good. After this one that I do have a stronger opinion on, Ridley's down air. This move is notorious for being one of the worst down airs in the entire game, and by itself, remember this is not a balanced discussion, that's not the end of the world, but there's obviously a way, way, way better candidate sitting right there, one of Ridley's most famous attacks, his Pogo Hop. His existing ground pound thing is a reference to the Metroid games, you see it in like the Metroid Prime titles, but I'd still say that it overall is nowhere near as strong a reference. The tail pogo thing would be more difficult to balance than the ground pound for sure, it's definitely more of an extreme kind of attack, but Ultimate started off a little more conservative with the range of its characters' movesets, but then by the end of it you've got stuff like Sephiroth's Dan Air, so I think Ridley's tail is probably one that we can get away with without too much issue. So. I've been kind of easing you into this so far. I think most people would not have super strong opinions about getting rid of these moves. The next one, I don't expect that to be the case. Little Max KO Punch. I've said it before on the main channel, I think Little Mac in his current incarnation is just a fundamentally unsalvageable design. He's widely cited to be one of the worst designed characters in the game, and honestly, KO Punch is a long way from the only reason for that. It's not even that impactful in a lot of matches, it's not the worst thing in the game to run away from, but that's part of the problem. KO Punch is just so representative of how Little Mac is supposed to be fought, run away from him, use the platforms, and then just hope that you can chip away at him over time, which I'd really like to see removed. I'd like Little Mac to be way more competitive against these kinds of strategies, but they can't give that to him while maintaining his current strength on the ground, and KO Punch is a big symptom of that. What exactly you'd replace this with, I'm not quite sure. I've played the Punch-Out games before, but I'm not a huge fan of the series or anything. A lot of people tend to comment that Little Mac actually really doesn't play that much like he does in Punch-Out, which is much more bait-and-punish kind of style. I disagree with that to an extent. I think if you watch a lot of top Little Mac play, it's actually more defensive than you might initially expect, but the bottom line, he clearly needs something done, and I think that KO Punch is a good starting point. Alright, maintaining the controversial track... Actually, is this controversial? I'm not totally sure. Okay, you tell me. Ganondorf's Warlock Punch. If you followed the Mock Rock channel at all, you've probably heard me talk about Ganondorf before, but just to quickly catch you up, there is no character I want in Smash more than I want a reworked Ganondorf, and there is no move on Ganondorf I want reworked more than Warlock Punch. Warlock Punch and Volcano Kick are both functionally close to useless, but at the very least Volcano Kick is something kind of unique to Ganondorf, whereas Warlock Punch is just lamer Falcon Punch. And on top of that, there's generally way more moves that design potential with special moves than there are with a lot of normal moves, and Neutral B if you look at what it does for so many characters' movesets, and then you look at Ganondorf, and then you look at Ganondorf in the Legend of Zelda series and see all the incredible powers he could pull from, this one's a real sore point for me. <laughs> give him a float, give him a projectile, give him another sword thing, give him a teleport, I don't- just give him anything. Please, 
anything beyond this punch. I say it still might be controversial because I know a lot of people are kind of attached to how Ganondorf plays in Smash. He's kind of almost his own entity at this point, like Captain Falcon. Keep some of that. I like Ganondorf and frankly, a fair amount of the legacy characters at this point to get a really heavy rework with almost more of a DLC-ish kind of mentality whenever Smash 6 comes around. But you can keep some elements like, for example, his down air. I think at this point, his down air just kind of has to stay. But a lot of his other stuff like, yeah, no, get it out the door and Warlock Punch, please start with that. All right, keeping the Zelda train rolling here, at least one of the Link's spin attacks. So there are differences between these moves. Breath of the Wild Link's is the powerhouse version, Young Link's is the combo version, and then Toon Link's is kind of the consistent middle ground version. But still, with that being said, if you look at all the things these characters can do in The Legend of Zelda, these are way too close to each other. The clone excuse doesn't really fly anymore either because these moves all needed to be animated differently, they all needed to be programmed differently. The whole point of a cloned move set is supposed to be to save time, but these moves wouldn't really have saved all that much time to implement. Here's what I would personally do if I was in charge of the game, and keep in mind, I'm not really talking about balance here. Like, Link's spin attack is a very good move in his kit, but I'm just kind of talking about the fundamental design first and then assuming that the balance would come in later. In Smash 4, Adult Link was almost kind of a unique original hybrid version of different iterations of the character, but in Ultimate, he's very, very explicitly based on Breath of the Wild, so he should have a Breath of the Wild up B, that being Revali's Gale. It would feel weird for him not to have what's arguably his most iconic ability, though, so instead, just move it to Down Smash. His current down smash is just kind of a whatever generic sword swipe to both sides, tons of characters off, stuff like that, and you could even keep it basically the exact same animation. That single hit spin attack is how the move has actually generally worked for adult 3D Link. Toon Link, just make it the hurricane spin. Let him move from side to side with it. I really don't understand why this is not already a thing, even within Ultimate's time constraints and Toon Link clearly being one of the characters they had very little time to dedicate to changing him. This would have been so easy to do. And then Young Link, honestly, you can probably just keep that one as is. He's already kind of the legacy hold down the fort character anyways. He's got a lot more of the traditional Link moveset both in Zelda and Smash, so that would be fine with me. I know I've heard people say that they'd rather have him change to represent more like, you know, the child timeline in Ocarina of Time and then Majora's Mask especially. I'd be totally on board with that too, but my point is if you're going to have one sort of hold down the fort middle of the road Zelda character, I think he makes sense. All right, and now for something completely different, Yoshi's Egg Roll. So to begin with, this move sucks. It's one of the absolute worst side special moves in the entire game, and I've heard a lot of Yoshi players say they would literally rather have no side specials so that at least when they tried to do their B reverse neutral Bs, they didn't get this by accident. Now, of course, you could absolutely buff this move to make it better, but my question is, do you really want that? We have so many of these kind of zoom across the stage side Bs already. This is a pretty boring reference to the Yoshi series. Series. It's a pretty boring Smash design. Surely we can do better. Yoshi's design in general is kind of boring in Smash, and in the actual Yoshi titles over the last few years, he's veered off into some very interesting directions. Pick an inspiration starting point from one of them and go from there. Moving on, and this is one I've got some personal beef with Ike's Eruption. You know what move doesn't come from Fire Emblem? Eruption. You know what does come from Fire Emblem? Ike firing projectiles out of his sword. You know what my favorite archetype in Smash is? Heavyweight Projectile Sword Fighter, or it would be if I, had one. if I could ask for any single individual move to be changed in Smash, not entire characters, but just a single move on a single character, it would be this one, by far. Eruption is not a useless move, it's a very good two-frame if you have the time to set it up in matchups where they're guaranteed to have to try and grab the ledge, but that's still very niche and you could take his design concept so much further. I am very sore about this one, in case you can't tell. Okay, I, I could get into that one for a while, but for the sake of keeping the pace going here, DK's headbutt. I don't really like a lot of how DK is designed in Smash. He's just kind of a big, dumb, generic gorilla with big, dumb, generic gorilla moves, and I think headbutt is probably the worst case of this. All of his special moves are pretty uninspired, but one of them, okay, the ultimate big hit, I guess that kind of makes sense. Recovery move, that's sort of a reference to Dixie Kong, fair enough. And then down special and ultimate, at the very least, is useful and entertaining, but the headbutt is just so bland. Give him a barrel. Easy choice, he's been so heavily associated with barrels since the very first time he ever appeared in a video game. He pops out of a barrel at the start of a match, a lot of his stages incorporate barrels in some way, but he himself has never used a barrel in his moveset, and it makes no sense. Okay, another one that I think will surprise absolutely no one here. Sonic Spin Dash or Spin Charge. I don't really care which one because they're the same thing. Now, in the past, when I have brought this up in videos before, I've always had a few people come into the comments and go like, no, you don't understand, they're not the same thing. 
they have different startup frames, they have different trajectories, they have different combo routes, all that stuff. I know, I know, believe me, I understand that this is technically true, but come on, they're the same move compared to basically any other two special moves any character in the game has. Sonic has appeared in so, so many games with so, so many different sets of powers and abilities and appearances. Some people would say too many powers and abilities and appearances, but clearly there's a ton of material to pull a moveset from, and while his original overuse of the blue ball form may have been a necessary concession to get him into Brawl, which I can't understand. At this point, two full console cycles later, really, we're still stuck with it? Honestly, I just don't get it. And I know that most Sonic mains are kind of in agreement with me about this, but for the handful that I always see that aren't, like, have some faith in yourself and your character, guys. You can do better than this. Before we move on to the last slot, I'm just going to give a couple honorable mentions. There are plenty of moves I could have pulled from here. Maybe I'll make like a follow-up video to this at some point, but just a few that I thought stood out to me more. Kirby's Hammer is a big one. That would probably get a mainline slot in this video, except that I've already done an entire video dedicated to Kirby, which already has a decently long hammer rant in it, so go watch that one. One thing I did not mention in that video, though, is that I think it's still perfectly fine to keep Hammer around. It's a pretty iconic Kirby copy ability, but just move it to an aerial or a smash attack instead of having it as a special move. Again, special moves are a great chance to be creative with movesets. Hammer is not a particularly creative special move. And the other one is Dark Pit's Silver Bow. His signature weapon is the Sniper Staff. Giving that to him would be a great little bit of decloning without fundamentally changing his playstyle too much. I just think there are other characters who deserve higher priority though. And also, I'm a Dark Pit main and I really like Silver Bow. It's one of my favorite moves to use in the game. And our final entry for the day, rounding things off on just a universally hated move. Jigglypuff's rollout. Jigglypuff is another of these clone characters that really has not stood the test of time very well, originally based on Kirby, and thankfully she hasn't been stuck in total clone hell the same way that, say, Ganondorf has, but still, a lot of her moveset is pretty generic and uninspired, and rollout is probably the single worst example of this. If we're talking Smash, it's both an extremely bad move and an extremely boring move, and if we're talking Pokemon, while she technically does have access to rollout, so do a lot of other Pokemon. The fairy type didn't exist in Pokemon when the original Super Smash Bros. was made, but it exists now and has for a while, and Jigglypuff is one of the most famous fairy type Pokemon, and yet none of her special moves are fairy type. Rest, while very unfaithful to how it works in Pokemon is at this point one of the most famous attacks in Super Smash Brothers, so it's not going anywhere. Sing, while not a fairy type move, is still a trait that's very heavily associated with Jigglypuff. Pound would frankly still not be a terrible choice for the chopping block, but it still ultimately directly ties into her aerial focus as a character, and what's this? We're looking for a potentially open move slot to put a fairy type move into? Hmm. Interesting. Disarming Voice would be a pretty obvious fit for the role. Charm. Draining Kiss. Dazzling Gleam. Play Rough. You get the picture. Pokemon's obviously been around for a long time, whole lot of moves to pull from, and basically any of them would be a lot better than Rollout. Here's hoping that Jigglypuff, like all the characters on this list, gets some well-deserved love whenever the next Smash title eventually comes around. Alright, thanks for watching everyone, and let me know what your list would look like. Liking and commenting on a video increases how much YouTube shares it in the algorithm, so if you think this deserves it, much appreciated. There's a tier list on Command Grabs above, a video about Kirby on my main channel below, and patrons, YouTube members, and Twitch subs get stuff like early videos and access to my Discord server. Later, people!